So in essence, you don't have any cogent intelligence, reliable intelligence to say Chibok girls are still alive. And they are in one place. That's right. That's the honest truth. Okay. I'll let you take the next question on security in Gazi. Yes, sir. Mr. President, um, still on this case about, in fact, Nigeria, we can safely say is at war and spending a whole lot of money. The economic, expend, the economic activities of Nigeria today are reverted to the war zone. And therefore, it's people's opinion that whatever happens in terms of routing the terrorists, whether it's technical defeat or whatever, that we make sure that there is no relapse, that they do not come back. Because we've been having back and forth, you know, and part of that is the issue of the IDPs. I have heard that they are coming back, they are going back to their origins, where they came from by the first quarter of 2016. And when I heard that, I was a bit worried, sir, because um, they are very vulnerable, that's for sure. Um, but more importantly is that this country is as strong as its weakest link, and they are our weakest link. Are they going back to exactly what they left? What's the strategy in taking them back? Are they going to be resettled in some secure places? Or are they going to continue to be like sitting dogs and they are going to keep picking them? And each time one person dies over there, the rest of us are dying in, in, in degrees. And um, once you send them back there and these people move back, it's easy for them to move back. And the other thing is, has there been some kind of psychological counseling with these people before they go back. Because they go back and they are there, they don't even understand what's going on. Many of them are cannon fodder for the same Boko Haram. That is a very tragic irony. They use some of them and they willingly join, follow them. So how do we really integrate them and they feel like they are part of us even though they've gone back and they, in their heads they understand what is going on and that they are part of the fight and that they can, you know, um, blow the whistle on whoever is strange in their community. As a matter of fact, are they going back to the same community as was constituted or is there some new configuration for them that will be more secure? Yeah, well, um Perhaps you know there are about two million internally displaced persons in different camps, but mostly in Borno State. I was meant to understand over 70 percent of those are women and children, and uh, over 65 percent of the children are orphaned. Their parents have been killed. Some of them. I uh, don't even know from where they are. This is how pathetic the situation is. Before this government came in, there was an airport where some Nigerians contributed money, the Dangotis, uh, Lieutenant General T.Y. Danjuma, and a number of people. And uh, about 25 billion was realized. There was a committee uh, that was to supervise how that money can be utilized, you know, to rehabilitate the IDPs. Um, and if you could recall, within the week I was going in, I went to Chad and Niger. I was to go to Cameroon when I was asked by G7 to go and meet them in Germany. Within the week I went and saw them and uh, I was impressed with the goodwill they have for Nigeria on that issue. And on my coming back, we sent our shopping list in terms of the infrastructure destroyed, burnt schools, burnt health centers, uh, burnt towns, and so on. And they promised to help, so we sent it. Um, 
members of G7 and others have uh, sent training teams to our men, uh, have given some uh, hard and soft military wear, and uh, we are directing them to meet mostly Bono State government officials that can take them to various local governments where there was this incident. And uh, what I deliberately did was to create the impression that we want cash. But what we recommend is for those countries that intend to help to send people to verify and quantify the damage done to the infrastructure and then volunteer what they will do. And then some coordination is created. Um, I think the worst one was, was the one about the, uh, the orphan children. We are trying to find out where they come from, see if we can take them back to their villages, uh, repair their schools, put equipment, get teachers, and try to re-establish neighborhood so they can get out of the trauma eventually. Yes. So that they don't lose uh, educational uh, opportunities. Yes. This is what we are doing. We have got the money, as I said, with the committee headed by General Anjuma. Uh, we have got the undertaking of uh, G7 and some countries. And I assure you that uh, uh, some progress is being made on the ground. Yeah. But if I may just very quickly add to that, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, in Benin, for example, there are uh, a few hundred of p yeah. uh, young kids who are yeah. there, and we don't have any information regarding the federal government putting any money to assist the individual who is a church leader who has decided to create this camp for them. We don't have any information. Is there anything the federal government is doing about that camp and all the other camps that litters the country? Yes, the Benin one is... Uh uh, I think it's a good intention by some church organization that uh, went a bit sour. Some of the children were taken through Plateau State. And uh, the governor came and saw me, uh, Oshomole. Uh, he came along, uh, the IG was invited, Inspector General of Police, and they have forgotten the side the person. And what we ask is that. Uh, uh, those children, those that can know from where they come from, let them, uh, let them get their names. And some of the parents, in fact, went to Benin and saw their children. Oh. And yes, we thought some of the parents were so poor that they don't even have the money to pay for their transport. But some went, they identified them and helped identify others and were taken back uh, to Bono Street or Yobe or Adama, but those that uh, prefer to stay with that church in Benin, you know, they were allowed to do so, but their parents came, saw, saw them, and they agreed that their children were in safe hands. So I'm in touch with the IG, the governor, and one other person, I think, that, that has got uh, relevance with this. So the federal government knows about it and is doing something about it. But in terms of funding them, is the federal government putting its money where its mouth is to fund and to ensure that those children have good education and have a future to look forward to? We are doing it through the governor of Shomali because he was kind enough to get a school where, where they would be put in schools. They, he, doesn't, he, he, he didn't want them to be permanent refugees and he shared our own idea. Identify which class they are distributed them among schools, possibly uh, for administrative convenience, within uh, Benin City itself, or where that church is. That church has a school, and the church put it in the school. So they will put them in the classes, 